this episode of Sound Builders, we're in Cincinnati, Ohio, spending the weekend with Reed Gazala, the inventor of circuit bending. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good morning. We are now headed to a little neighborhood called Bond Hill. It is where I grew up, and we're going to take a look at the house where circuit bending was born. This is 1610 Joseph Street, and circuit bending was discovered in my desk drawer right beneath that window, right about here, about two feet from my finger on the other side of this wall. This is the circuit, not the instrument, but the circuit that started the whole circuit bending revolution in 1966-67. Uh, that circuit shorted out in my desk drawer, started making very strange, oscillating, sweeping sounds over and over again. Immediately I thought, if that can happen by accident, what might happen on purpose if I began shorting uh, battery-powered audio electronics, shorting it out here, there, and everywhere. And that led to what I ended up uh, calling circuit bending. And, and when I came up with the term circuit bending, it was actually based upon the idea of mind bending, a mind bending experience. This is what we talked about back then. So circuit bending sort of came out of that idea. You know, I've been accused of starting the first electronic art movement. I mean, if, if that's true, then, then that was better than the other things I could have done. Sit around and design in secret or just keep recording music and not, not try to take it out uh, uh, into public. My technique focuses on everybody. And you know, circuit bending has, it, it's leveled the playing field. It has become every man's technique for creating, uh, for prototyping audio circuitry. So that's one of the reasons I think it's spread like wildfire. You don't have to pay for it. Anyone can do it. You can learn it nearly instantly. The, you know, the beauty of circuit bending is that it is not a this wire goes here art. With this wire goes here, you end up with a bunch of uh, replicas or duplications of the same circuit. So that's not what I'm about, and that's not what circuit bending is about. And if Jackson Pollock were to design electronics, he'd be a circuit bender. I mean, the wires fall upon the circuit like the paint upon Pollock's canvas, you could say. Uh -huh. And what happens, happens. And if I like it, I stick with it. If I don't, I move on or add more wires or whatever it might be. The encanter is, is kind of the, the, the common denominator of circuit bending. A lot of people build an encanter to enter the field, to see what it does, to practice soldering or whatever, to end up with a viable instrument. I began bending these in 1978 uh, when Texas Instruments first released these things uh, to the public. As a circuit bender, the idea of synthetic human speech inside an instrument that could be bent was, for me, it was exciting beyond belief. Uh, the musical language that came out of these is uh, why they are still very uh, near and dear to me, very close to my heart. It's one of those things, one of those instruments that has so many uh, different personalities that it makes you want to bend them. I, I think the designers heard these things, but they probably thought, you know, <laughs> I'm being paid to make this thing talk to teach children how to spell the word cat. Yeah. And the fact that it's going, ding, 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 that's not good. <laughs> to me, oh, that was very good. <laughs> this is my, this is the anti-theory workshop. All of the modern instruments, that would be everything other than the two instruments from the 1960s, came out of there. We're going to be building one of these. It's a circuit bent uh, Buddha box. This is the one that we'll be bending. It's a it's considered an electronic jukebox or, or a chant box. Um, before I bent it, it would just uh, 
it would just uh, loop various uh, chants. All we're going to be doing is uh, replacing the resistor that governs the speed of the chants uh, with a few different things that will allow us to change the speed in different ways. I'm going to uh, wire the things that are beneath the circuit board once I put the circuit board back. So right now I'm going to wire up the photo cell. With circuit bending, there you there is no presumption because you you don't know what's going to happen. So you become an immediate part of the music, whatever that might be. And you know that there's a challenge to that, but there is um, I don't know. There's a mystery and a reward to that kind of not knowing uh, what's going to happen. Do you mind if I have a go? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> you probably use the Buddha box body contacts to play each other's flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> That cheek sounds pretty good. No, that's better. <laughs> and, and I'm still as excited as I was 40 years ago when I began to bend. When I bring something new home and put it on the bench <laughs> and open yeah. it up because what I've learned is anything, anything can happen. Thank you. Ah! Thanks very much, Reid. Ah! <laughs> ah!